Good morning, everyone. I had a question. How many of you all woke yourself up this morning? I had an issue that I just thought about. Every time I set my alarm clock to wake up, the Lord always seems to wake me up earlier to let me know that I'm not waking myself up. Is that something we can give him praise for? Come on, clap your hands. If you love the Lord today, say amen. If God's been good to you, say praise the Lord. Come on, let's stand and sing our doxology this morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Bring it out. Sabbath, everyone. Bow your heads with me as we talk to God. Father in heaven, thank you for waking us up on this bright and beautiful Sabbath day. We have gathered in this place because we love you, and Lord, we intend to worship you with our whole hearts today. So may your spirit, your presence fall down on this place and fill our hearts, we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Oh, good morning, Abundant Life. Did you, did, did you notice that the sound sounds just a little bit different today? Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I did. I, I, I look back there on your way out, look back and see. Uh, things are changing in Abundant Life for the better. Uh, if you ever go to the fellowship hall, uh, the, you know, you, there's light in there. Uh, the restrooms are there. Uh, God has been good to us, and please, please continue because we have so much more. Can you imagine what the sanctuary is going to look like when we paint it? Amen. So continue. Uh, it's with uh, deep regards that we uh, bring the information. Uh, those you may not know that our dear sister Margaret Landry passed away uh, this past week. So please remember the Rawls and the Landry family in your prayers. Please, please, please. Um, youth lunch today, right after the service, we're going to uh, Brother Cooper's home, and uh, I don't know what he's going to put on the menu, but please, please make sure the young people come out and celebrate uh, with our youth. We have a big thing going up on the 28th. Uh, all the women in the church, uh, raise your hand. Just wave your hand. All the women, make sure that you are at this high tea time that's on the uh, 28th, and um, make sure you RSVP uh, by the 21st. So all the information you need is in the bulletin. Um, our weekly programs tonight, today at 5 is our Bible study, 6.30 is prayer meeting on Wednesday, and Sabbath school on Thursday, all um, are at on the same 
Well, uh, prayer meeting is on a different Zoom link. It's on the regional. And then it's all the information you need is in your bulletin. Make sure you keep it. There's a lot of ministry in that bulletin um, that can help us. All of our ministry, our bread ministry team, please just stand. All of our bread ministry team. All those of you that are shy. Cheryl's one of our hard workers. Uh, I work with them on Friday. Uh, the leader is uh, Kara Montague. And uh, one of the strong workers with the bread ministry is Brother Yancey. And Brother Yancey is at home resting uh, today because of the work that he's been doing all week. And so uh, we just pray that we remember him. Uh, that brother, every time I come to church, he's there doing something. And so we appreciate Brother Yancey. We appreciate our whole bread ministry team. All of our visitors, kindly stand, all of our visitors. Well, all of our visitors, wave your hand, uh, shout hallelujah. Uh, just let us know that you are glad to be here with us. Amen, amen, amen. I just want to close, and I pulled my phone out, and it went east, and I was trying to go west. But anyway, it says, be thankful. Be, th be thankful that you don't already have everything you desire. If you did, what would there be uh, to look forward to? Be thankful when you don't know it, uh, something, for it gives you the opportunity to learn. Be thankful for the difficult times. During those times you grow. Be thankful for your limitations because they give you the opportunity for improvement. Be thankful for your mistakes. They will teach you valuable lessons. Be be thankful when you're uh, tired and weary because it means you'll make a difference. It is easy to thank God for the good things in life. A life of rich fulfillment comes to those who are also thankful for the setbacks. Find a way to be thankful for your troubles and they can become your blessings. Thank you. May God continue to bless us. Our morning hymn is coming to us from hymn number 229, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Let us stand at this time. We're going to sing all four verses. Yeah. 
his feet may fall join in the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all join in the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Thank you. You may be seated. Praise God again, everyone. And happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. I want to know if there's anyone who's had a birthday recently or you have one coming up in the next couple of days. Anyone present? Birthday coming up. What day? That last? That March 30th? All right. Happy birthday to you from March 30th. Amen. Anyone else? Today. Today. Go on and stand up. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Stand up. Your birthday's today? Hey, Brother Woody? I thought she said Brother Martin. Brother Woody. All right. Happy birthday to you. You don't want to stand up, but happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Amen. On this Sabbath day, we praise God for you. Any other birthdays? I see you. Someone is being voluntold. What, what day is your birthday? April 7th. Happy birthday to you as well. Did I miss anyone? We want to say happy birthday to all those who have had recent birthdays or if you have a birthday coming up in the next few days. I see a couple other hands. What day? April 5th? 25th. All right. Happy birthday for the 25th. I see another hand. You, 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 you. All right. I, 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 somebody's pulling it back down. All right. We'll get you next time. But happy birthday to all those who have had and are having birthdays here in the next few days. Continue to share those with us. You can tell Sister Debbie in the uh, administrative uh, assistance office. And also, if you have anniversaries coming up, we want to hear. We want to know. We want to celebrate along with you. Amen. We want to remind you our bulletins, though we have them in hand, you can always get them online. There's a QR code that you can scan and you can see those on your phone. Board members, we've been asking for your budgets and we need them. Tuesday is cutoff day. The end of probation is this Tuesday, amen? If you do not submit a budget for us to review, then we will do the bidding for you, amen? And you may not be happy with that. So we, we want to give you an opportunity. This is our third Tuesday in a row that the Finance Committee will be meeting. So please turn that in so that we can finish our work. We intend to have it all done for the board meeting, which will be the fourth Tuesday of this month, so that we can hit May running with everything in place. Is that all right? All right, so we want to see those things in place. Also, for those who are watching online, we appreciate you joining our worship service wherever you are, whether you're watching live or you're watching this some other time. I want to ask you if you're watching online, go ahead and hit the like button on YouTube or Facebook. Subscribe to our page and let's, let's grow our subscribers. Let's grow, grow our reach. Spread this link with someone. As you see, we are trying to enhance our media in all forms, and so we're going to take that to a higher level this year. Amen? I want to give you some building updates. There's some work that's been done that you may not see as much as you've seen some of the other things that we've done. Uh, you may have noticed that the gate is being repaired in the parking lot. Amen? And we are repairing all these gates so that we can secure our property each and every night. Amen? There's some unsavory things that have been happening in, to our vehicles and to our property, and we want to make sure that we secure it properly and so the gates are being repaired that will be done here in short order there's a lot of work that's being done in the building next door our community center fellowship hall lighting is going up in the room amen if you know we've had some of those streamer lights that we just plug in but we are actually getting some real lights done the bathrooms have been done floors and walls and brand new toilets all that has been done in there soon we will have insulation and drywall in the ceiling amen so that we can actually turn on the AC in the summertime and not be wasting all of our AC, amen? And so continue. I know that m many of you have given seed money. You can keep on giving so we can keep on doing these things. And so a lot of stuff is being done, and in soon order, we want to have this fellowship hall done. We want to get the installation done so that in the summer we can turn on the AC and do the rest of the work in there that needs to be done. And so I praise God 
for, for all that is happening. I want to shout out the Bread Ministry one more time. They've been doing a tremendous work for the community, and I know that you stood before, but we all want to say thank you for everything that you have done. Amen? And so we are, we are definitely thankful. And, and, and I, I'm holding a brand new mic in my hand today. Amen? Brand new mic. You can clap to that. And this is the reason why. We have some individuals that, that have come here to help us uh, enhance our media. If you remember when I was asking you to give seed money, it was for, for, for the moderna modernization of our facilities and also to enhance our media. Amen? And so that's what we're doing. We are enhancing our media. We are, we are uh, uh, broadening our reach online. We are, we are enhancing uh, what we are putting online. So when you go home, I want you to, to listen to everything that's online and, and text me and tell me what you think about it after today's service. And if there's some other, other things that we need to tweak, we're going to go ahead and tweak them. We're getting some training. We have updated our board. We've gotten some new mics, and there's a whole lot more that is going to happen because we are trying to do what it says on that sign. And what does that sign say? A higher level. We are trying to go to a higher level in every aspect. When we come into church, it is to praise God and to fellowship with each other, but it is also to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? And we can do that better by enhancing our media. We can have a better reach, and people will listen when they can actually hear clearly. Is that all right? And so that's why we're trying to do these things. So continue to give, and I praise God for the progress that's being made. And I want to say thank you to everyone in every form who has done anything to help us with the building, uh, all of our deacons, our deaconess, those who are on the building committee, those who have made calls, who have showed up and contractors have come by, those who have worked things out, our treasury staff, everybody who has worked together to make these things happen. I want to say thank you because it doesn't happen unless we work together as a team. Amen? So may God be praised. But at this time, I'm going to get you out of your way and invite all of our children to come forward for our children's story. And I want you to pull out your dollar bills and, and your tens and twenties and hundreds out your pockets. And let's continue to contribute to the children's ministry. Amen. Hello, everybody. Hello. So as you see, I am not Miss Kimberly, but I have to make a couple quick announcements before we get our children's story going. So on Sunday, I was at an adventurer's fair, 
and I received a text message from Uncle Troy. Do you know who Troy, Uncle Troy is? <laughs> okay, Uncle Troy, wave. Look, he's way back there in the media area. So Uncle Troy sent me some pictures. I'm going to show them to you because we can't pull them up on the screen. Where is that? Kailani, where is that? That's in the uh, playroom. That's in the children's or the AKA the playroom. Okay, what is on the floor in this playroom? Uh, a rock. Okay, that's not what you're supposed to be seeing. Let me zoom it up. Uh, trash. Trash. And what have we been saying over and over again? What are we supposed to do with our snacks? Clean up. Clean up. Are we supposed to leave trash on God's floor? No. no. But there was trash. And how do I know that it was a kid? Because it was the snacks that Sister McLee had given you. So I am giving a warning. There will be no more snacks if we find trash. I was embarrassed because Uncle Troy found it. I didn't even find it, he found it. Now he's looking at you guys with a side eye, okay? So we are gonna change up some things. Instead of snacks being held, handed out right after children's story, you come and find me after church, okay? Because we are not gonna turn God's house into a trash house. But number two, this goes to you parents, because somebody was in the room with those kids, and you walked out of the church, and you left everything on the floor. So I blame you guys more than I blame them, because ultimately you are responsible for them, okay? So we are going to try to keep God's house clean. And don't worry, because if I catch adults doing the same thing, oh, I'm going to get them too, okay? I'm going to get them double good, right? Because I know, I know that you guys know better than that. And you were probably tired, and your mom or dad said, let's go, and you just ran out the room. That's probably what happened. Okay, so before we get into the story, everybody needs a little glow stick. Come on, grab them. Do you know how to light up sticks? Come on, grab them. Come. Okay, don't worry, I have some more. Light it now, light it now, please. Okay. Who doesn't have one? Everybody has one? <laughs> They're like, no. Come on. Here. Come on. Grab them quickly. Come on. Garrett, just take one. Come on. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Huh? Okay, now remember, these don't go in your mouth. They do not go in your mouth, okay? So are we ready for the children's story? Do you think you're ready to be good listeners? Hello? Are you ready to be good listeners? I can't hear you. Are you ready to be good listeners? Are you ready for the children's story? Okay, I'm sorry. Happy Sabbath, everybody. How much do you love Jesus? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let me cue. When I say how much do you love Jesus, you say a whole lot, okay? How much do you love Jesus? How much do you love Jesus? Let me see if your parents can beat you. How much do you guys love Jesus? All together, how much do we love Jesus? Are we ready? Yes. Now introducing our children's story with Bobby Peters.
shine This little light of mine Come on I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine Hello kids and kids at heart My favorite color is red. I am six years old and I'm so glad to be here. My mommy says my eyes are large just like hers. And my daddy says my head is big because I'm really smart. Hehe. <laughs> I am so happy to be here with all of you. If you're happy to be here, say yay! A lot louder, please. Yay! Great. That sounds better. Well, I want to tell you a story about making an impact in life. Say Impact. On the count of three, we'll say impact really loud. One, two, three. Impact. All right. Making an impact in your life, in your family, in your school, and with your friends and neighbors. It's important. Because it means you make a great positive change for the good. Did you know that you can make an impact even though you're a kid? You can. And when you do, it's not always easy. But God will help you do it. And even when you grow up, God will help you to keep making a positive change in the lives of others. There were kids and grown-ups in the Bible, like little David and little Miriam and Moses and Esther, who made an impact for the good. These items up here all help people make an impact. Say impact. 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 This is a staff. When I hold it up, shout staff. Let's try it. Staff. This says three days. When I hold it up, shout three days. Let's try it. Three days. This is a sword. When I hold it up, Shout sword. Let's try it. Sword. Now, when you hear each name, I will say a name four times. One, two, three, four. Then you say the same name made an impact. Remember to say it loud, okay? Let's try it. I'll say Moses, 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 Moses. Then you say Moses made an impact. Let's try Esther. Esther, 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 Esther made an impact. Good job. Let's try David. David, 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 David made an impact. Let's try Miriam. Miriam, 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 Miriam. Miriam made an impact. I think you got it. I want you to help me sing this song. Let's sing. His name is Moses. He is a star. He led God's people away from wrath. Oh, 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 
Moses, 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 Moses made an impact. Her name is Miriam. Moses is sister. Their mother hid him in the Nile River. Ah, ah, ah. Miriam, 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 Miriam made an impact. Her name is Esther. She prayed three days. God saved her people. They were amazed. Oh, oh, oh. Esther, 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 Esther made an impact. His name is David. He trusted the Lord. He killed a giant without a sword. Oh, oh, oh. David, 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 David made an impact. Good job. Alrighty, are you ready to make a impact? Yes. Well, you was kind of weak on that. Are you ready to make an impact? Yeah. Alrighty. So when you carry these little light brights home, remember that we too have a light to tell other people about Jesus. We are not too young to make an impact. Can I have one volunteer for prayer? Oh, you. Why do you guys always do this to me? Okay, how about, I'm going to pray for everybody because we got a lot of people who want to pray. Oh, I'm sorry. Guess what, though? For those in children's choir, we have rehearsal right after this, okay? All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of life. Thank you for reminding us that we, too, can make an impact. We love you so much, and we can't wait for you to come back for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. the church say amen amen that, that was something now it's time to make an impact with our tithe and offerings how about that God has been so good saints and um, as you know you know we we've all got our our crosses to bear and our journeys to go on but when we can come together into the house of God and lean on each other. It is one of the most beautiful experiences that one could ever have. Isaiah tells us, never forsake the assembling of yourselves together as most do. Why? Because together we, we've got unity. And we can pray, come together and pray together and tell each other what's on our, our minds and what's in our hearts. Having said that, it is prayer time. So all of you who would like to Bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Now is the time. Amen. 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 Shall we bow our heads? Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today as humbly as we know how, giving you thanks, honor, and glory for all the things that you have done and for who you are. Lord, you know many of us have experienced tragedy this week, and we ask, Lord, that you will comfort those who have been left behind. Lord, today I ask that you will continue to bless this church as it continues to grow. 
I pray for your presence in our lives on a daily basis. Lord, we also give you praise for healing, restoration. And we thank you, Lord, for just loving us the way we are, poor, blind, and naked. But we're your children, and we can claim that. We thank you so much for all the wonderful things that you have wrought in and out of our lives. We should have been killed in an accident, but we weren't. We should have caught that disease, but we didn't. Lord, we could have been put away for something that nobody else knew about, but you didn't. And evident is that we are here today as a unified body, worshiping you, bringing you praise. We thank you, Father, for everything. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to bless each and every household under the sound of my voice and that you will bring them prosperity, that you will bring them comfort, that you'll bring them healing and restoration. And when all is said and done, Lord, may we look up and say, this is our Father whom we've waited for, and he will save us. We thank you. We love you. We sure can't wait to see you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Sabbath, everyone. Um, we are standing here, a, a, a newly formed group. Um, welcome my daughter here. We are revival now, because we'd like to go a little higher and revive some of what God has placed in us that we've been letting lie dormant. And so this week was rough. Um, I've known Sister Everson since I was about eight, nine years old, and then Margaret is like an aunt to me. She was my aunt uh, Melba's best friend, and Angie's mine. Um, I've known them since I was five years old, so this week has been quite challenging. So pray with us as we minister first to God and ourselves and then to you. Everything in that 
Oh, I'm on now. Okay, all right. Talk about a higher level. Let me tell you something. I would pay to hear them. They did a fabulous job, a wonderful job. Now's the time <clears throat> where we can activate that praise I talked about earlier, and that is through your tithes and offerings. You know, I, re I can remember as a kid, I've always been... Yeah, I'd like to consider it pretty enterprising. And I had a couple of a couple of trash routes. I'd take people's cans in on trash day and take them, you know, and put them back when I got home from school. And it did marginally okay. Till my grandmother asked me, she said, "Are you paying tithe?" I said, "Was was was tithe?" She said, it's when you give 10% back from what you've earned. She said, I said, well, well, who do I give it to, you? Or who, who takes it? She says, no, you take it to church. And I want to help you count it every time you do it. So make sure you, you're not keeping too much for yourself. So I, I, I think the average haul was about 15 bucks a week. So that meant $1.50. And boy, I did not want to let go of that $1.50. Woo, mercy, have mercy. But as I began to do it habitually, and she would remind me, and we would keep doing it, I finally got in the groove. And do you know, God blessed. She would say, ask for what you want, who you want to pray for, you know, and all that. And she says, and pay your tithe. And the income was protected. It started to, to grow, and it got so big, I had to hire other kids to help me take uh, ascending blocks. 
which is great. But I got the big head. And we'll talk about that story later. <laughs> but my grandmother had a lot to do with that part. But it's wonderful when we can give our tithes to God because he not only blesses us, he protects our bounty. And that's what's so beautiful. Let's bow our heads. Father, we ask that you will bless the tithes that are taken up this morning. Bless those who are able to give and those who are not. We know that all things come from you and all things that we have should go back to you. We thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.
And yes, we do have our words because we want to give God the glory, but in excellence, give him the words because our screen in the back doesn't work for words right now, but um, eventually, amen.
I want to say amen again. I want to spend my whole life with Jesus Christ. How about you? Amen, 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 amen. What a wonderful song. Thank you, ladies, for, for blessing us in such magnificent fashion. Amen. And we praise God. And I want to say this. There are a lot of hearts that mourn. We buried a dear member this week. We had a passing of another member, Sister Landry, this week, and it's tough. And it's all right if you cry. Grieving is natural. But remember that God has a plan for it all, amen? And that he is coming again, and a day is coming when we shall hear that shout and the sound of that trumpet, and the dead in Christ will rise again, amen? And like the song says, we will spend our always with him, amen? Amen. So please be comforted. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet as we look at the scripture for today, which comes from Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7 and starting at verse 24, and I'm going to read from your, read in your hearing from the English Standard Version. You can follow along in whatever version it is that you have. And the Bible says there in Mark chapter 7, starting at verse 24, and from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and he entered a house and did not want anyone to know. Yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the little children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him and said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, for this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter 
And she went home and found the child laying in bed and the demon gone. Title of our message today is when Jesus treats you like a dog. When Jesus treats you like a dog. Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would speak to us today. Lord, we've heard from all kind of folk on the internet, social media, folk in our own homes, on our jobs at work, folk on the radio. Right now, we want to hear from you. So speak to us from heaven. And even though my voice is heard, may we hear your words today, we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. It's said that dogs are man's best friend. Dogs can be companions. Dogs can be protectors. For some folk, their dogs are prized possessions. But to be treated like a dog is to be humiliated. For when the word dog is used in the context of human treatment, it carries the greatest of negative overtones. For to be treated like a dog is to be treated with less than the dignity that you deserve. See, when a partner in a relationship has an unbalanced amount of power and begins to abuse the use of that power, it's said that he or she treated their partner like a dog. When a reliable friend who's trustworthy, genuine, and faithful acts outside of these characteristics, when, when, they, when they are that way but they act outside of those characteristics and disrespect uh, their companion, it's said that they dog their buddy out. When someone who's in need and less fortunate and weak or vulnerable is taken advantage of and robbed of their pride and self-respect, it is said that they were treated like dogs. Because to be treated like a dog is to be treated with less than the dignity that one deserves. But would you believe here in Mark chapter 7, Jesus, to a woman's face, refers to her as a dog. Three quick points, and then I'll get out of your way. But the first one is that when Jesus treats you like a dog, it means that he goes to any length to find you, and his presence cannot be hidden. Amen? Amen. I want you to look again at Mark chapter 7 and verse 24 and 25. It says, and from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it. He tried to hide, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. See, Jesus came to Tyre and Sidon, which were cities uh, that were where a lot of Gentile practices abounded, much like Las Vegas and the surrounding areas when, where we live, where a lot of Gentile practices abound. Am I right about that? See, Jesus actually went there to hide out and not be seen. He was trying to get away from folk, but he was Jesus. Could Jesus have been an introvert every now and then? He was trying to get away from people. But Jesus trying to hide out was like Shaquille O'Neal trying to hide out on the end of the bench of a junior varsity basketball team. It's just not going to happen. See, he stuck out like a sore thumb everywhere that Jesus went. Folk always knew that he was around. He couldn't go anywhere and not be seen. He was Jesus. Wherever he went, people followed him. Even when he tried to rest and relax and hide, somehow, some way, people always seemed to know that Jesus was around. Don't, 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 don't believe me? You right, might remember in Mark, the second chapter, after Jesus chose his disciples, they all went back to Peter's house, and Mark chapter 2 says, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house, and straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door he could not hide he was Jesus you may even remember in Mark chapter 6 it says when they had crossed over they came to land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore and when they got out of the boat the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever he they, they heard that he was he could not hide because he was Jesus you may even remember in John chapter 3, it says that there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, snuck up to Jesus to see him in the middle of the night. No matter where Jesus went, he could not hide. He was Jesus. 
Even demons knew when he was around, and they trembled and they begged for mercy. Mark, the first chapter, tells us that when Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath while minding his own business, a man with an unclean spirit stood up and began to shout and proclaim that Jesus was the Holy One sent from God. You might remember in Matthew chapter 8, it says when Jesus got out of the boat, there was a man living amongst tombs, and this man everybody else ran away from, but when he saw Jesus, Jesus, he recognized him and ran to him and the demons possessing his body cried out and they said Jesus have mercy on us it didn't matter where he was broad daylight pitch dark raining and pouring in the church with his friends at home or another person's house folk always seemed to know that Jesus was around amen And I need you to know that Jesus is always around. You can always call on him. His reputation preceded him. He carried himself like no other. He spoke like no other man spoke and did things that no other person could do. His teachings were original and refreshing. Wherever he went, Jesus made an impact, amen, and a lasting impression. So wherever and whenever he was present, some way, somehow, folk always knew that he was around and they desired to be around him, he could not hide because he was Jesus. So don't ever believe that you can't find Jesus or reach Jesus because even when he's trying to hide, he is ever present for you to come to him and to call on him just like this lady did who had a daughter who was possessed by demons. See, you know that we live in a society that's dominated by Gentile practices. Devices and substances of all types are legal and socially acceptable. Vile types of entertainment have become the norm. When left unchecked, social media exposes the masses to the most debasing of actions, uh, desensitizing the mind to sin. We live in a society that is overrun by modern day Gentile practices. But despite its prevalence in society and all around us, I'm so glad that Jesus still goes to any and every length to save us. Amen. See, many times we act like we're hiding out, not wanting to be seen. But if we truly have Jesus, we will want to be seen because nothing outshines the light and love of Jesus. And you and I should be that light so that the world can see. Despite the evil influences pervasive in our society, people ought to know that we know Jesus. Everywhere that we go, people ought to see in us a resemblance of Jesus. People should never be surprised when we profess to be Christian. You're at work and you get into a conversation. You say, yeah, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. What? You? I would have never thought. That should never be the response of anyone to you if you are a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. They ought to know that when we're around and flock to us, that they should know that when they come to us, that we have a direct line to the power of God because we are always on our knees talking to him. Folk ought to bring the concerns of their loved ones to this church to find healing because they know that Jesus is here. Folk ought to reach out to touch this church like the woman with the issue of blood reached out to touch Jesus. Folk ought to sneak up here in the middle of the night like Nicodemus did because they believe that they'll find Jesus here. Folks should bring their afflicted loved ones up in here because they believe that healing will take place in this place. Demons ought to tremble when we sing. They should cry out for mercy. They should run down hills and drown in oceans because they know that Jesus Christ is in this place. Amen. I wish that somebody up in here listening would decide that I want to be a little bit more like Jesus. And I understand he's always around and he will go to any and every length to find me, to find me, to find me. So when Jesus treats you like a dog, he goes to any length to find you and his presence cannot be hidden. But listen to this. He's also the answer and everyone is worthy of his blessings. So while Jesus is trying to hide, this Gentile woman whose daughter is possessed by an unclean spirit seeks out Jesus and somehow finds him. Mark chapter 7 verse 26 says something very interesting. Look at it there. Mark 7 verse 26, it said, Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth. Listen to me. Syrophoenician Gentiles worshipped pagan gods when they were looking for healing they prayed for healing to those pagan gods 
But the verse goes on to say that she begged Jesus to cast the demon out of her daughter. This Syrophoenician Gentile understood there were no power in the pagan gods that she had been brought up worshiping. She knew that Jesus Christ had the power. How many of you who have grown up being taught about Jesus really believe that he and he alone has the power? She grew up going to temples and doing all this temple stuff and believing in these Gentile gods and praying to these idols, but she understood they had no power. She went right to Jesus and begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Now, what she asked for seemed like a pretty reasonable request. Am I right? Well, for Jesus anyway, that seemed like a reasonable request. If she asked me or you to cast out the demon, I would have to refer her to Jesus. <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs> he does that. Uh, but, but she went right to Jesus. It's a reasonable request. He'd done this type of thing many times before. But check out his response to the woman. We've read it. Let's read it again in verse 27 of Mark 7. He said to her, let the children be fed first. He's speaking metaphorically. For it's not right to take the children's food and throw it to the, looking directly at her, to the dogs. Lord, have mercy. Watch your mouth, Jesus. His language seemed demeaning, even downright racist. He referred to the Jews as children and referred to the Gentiles as dogs. The children he was speaking of were the children of Israel. Jesus was saying that his blessings were reserved for descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the dogs he was referring to were everyone else, that they're not worthy of these blessings. So Jesus called this woman a dog to her face. That's cold-blooded, don't you think? Had that been some of us, we'd be like, oh, no, I, he, I know he didn't just call me a dog. What's up, Jesus? You want to take this outside? That would have been some of us, Right? But this woman was like, I don't mind being called a dog because when Jesus makes this statement, she thinks quick on her feet and she rolls with it. And in verse 28, she says, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. In other words, she was saying, why don't you break me off a little something, something. You might be blessing the children of Israel, but let some of the crumbs and those blessings fall down on me. Come on, somebody. No job, no title, no position was beneath her if it meant that her daughter would be healed from that demon possession, amen? If I got to be a dog in the eyes of Jesus for my kids to be healed, I'll be a dog in the eyes of Jesus. Just let some of your blessings fall down on me. That's all I need, oh Lord. See, there are some folk who treat their dogs better than they treat other people, am I right? Some folk treat their dogs like their children. I've seen dogs in baby strollers and people walking up and down the street, and I think they got a baby, and I look, that's an ugly, oh, that's a dog, okay. <laughs> Thought it was an ugly baby. That's a dog, that's a dog. Some people dress their dogs in sweaters. <laughs> Some people dress their, <laughs> I'm looking at my wife, she knows what I'm talking about. Some people dress their dogs in sweaters. You've seen dogs with little shoes on, they start walking funny because they, they're not used to it. Some people allow their dogs to sleep in the bed with them. Some people buy their dogs birthday gifts and Christmas gifts. You see the dog all up in the family Christmas photo, <laughs> like that one of the family members. Some folk get better health insurance for their dogs than your employer offers to you. Lord have mercy. Some folk only feed their dogs the best, most expensive dog food. Some people give their dogs nothing but the choicest cuts of meat. There are some dogs out there living better than some of us. Lord have mercy. Some of us eating ramen noodles and, and, and cheese sandwiches and dogs got steak and roasted chicken and, and all the rest of that stuff. For some of us, being a dog in the home of a pampering owner would be an upgrade from our current living condition and place in life. And this woman knew it was all right to be a dog in the eyes of Jesus. See, see, when Jesus treats you like a dog, it's a blessing because he's given you something that you don't deserve. Amen? 
See, this Syrophoenician, she was a Gentile by birth. Uh, to the Jews, the Gentiles were considered unclean. They were looked upon as second-class citizens who were undeserving of the blessings of the true and living God. They were considered by the Jews to be outside of the promises made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They had no promised inheritance from God. The Jews saw them as hedonistic and pagan in their practices. It was believed that heaven even wasn't for them. But look, Jesus took that blessing that was reserved for the children of Israel and shared it with this Gentile woman. In other words, he did break her off something and gave her some of those crumbs. See, Jesus just referred to this woman as a dog. If you refer to me as a dog, we might fight. If you call me a female dog, we might fight. If you throw something at my feet and tell me to get down on all fours and pick it up, we might fight. I know I'm supposed to turn the other cheek and all, but sometimes, Lord help me. But, but, but see, if you treat me like a dog, we're going to have some problems. But if Jesus treats me like a dog, it's completely different. See, I'll be a dog in the eyes of Jesus if, if it means that the crumbs of blessings from heaven will fall at my feet and something in my life is changed. I'll be a dog in the eyes of Jesus if it means that someone in my life can receive freedom from demonic influences. I'll be a dog in the eyes of Jesus if it means that I'll receive a breakthrough in a situation that I've been busting my head against. I'll be a dog in the eyes of Jesus if he'll take a portion of something that he was going to give to somebody else and then he breaks off a little piece for me that's all right that's why I'm okay saying pass me not oh gentle savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling Lord please don't pass me by I don't mind being a dog in the eyes of Jesus if it means that he's going to break off some blessings for me amen see listen 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 when you think about it sheep dog what's the difference in scripture, we refer to the believers and the followers are often referred to as sheep, dog. What's the difference? As long as Jesus is your master, the Lord is my shepherd, whether I'm a sheep dog or a sheep, amen? And as the good shepherd, he'll take care of all my needs. It means that my food pan will remain full and my water bowl will never run dry for he said that my bread and water shall be sure. He'll make me to lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. And even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear because our master Jesus is right there with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. I don't mind being a dog in the eyes of Jesus. It's just the same as being a sheep. Oh Lord, just let some crumbs of your blessings fall down on me but see none of us are deserving of these blessings we were born in sin and in sin born in iniquity and in sin did our mothers conceive us the bible even says that all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned every one to his own way yet despite our bitter unworthiness jesus looks past our condition he looks past our sinfulness and he blesses us. He allows some mercy to fall our way. He brushes over just a little bit of his grace. Jesus doesn't treat us like dogs or humiliate us. When we're in deplorable dog-like condition, Jesus treats us with much more dignity than we deserve and serves as a plate full of love and grace. And he does it by taking the blessings of the promised inheritance and he shares it with us. Look at Galatians chapter 3, Galatians 3 and verse 27. It says, for as many of you were baptized in the Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus, and if you're Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, and you are heirs according to the promise, amen? When Jesus treats you like a dog, he goes to any length to find you, and his presence cannot be hidden, and he's the answer, and everyone is worthy of his blessings, and my third and final point is he shows that everyone is worthy of his salvation and his grace. The question is, why did Jesus deal with this woman in such a manner? The answer can be found by determining why he dealt with her at all. Jews and Gentiles were like oil and water. They didn't mix. The Jews treated their animals better than they treated Gentiles. 
For if a Jewish man's ox fell in a ditch on the Sabbath, he would get that ox out the ditch on the Sabbath. But if a Jewish man saw a Gentile fall down in a ditch on the Sabbath, he would tell that Gentile to sit tight till the sun went down. They didn't care much for the Gentiles. They considered them a nuisance. They were all about themselves. Why did Jesus deal with this woman at all is the question. There were Jewish laws that forbade Jews from interacting with Gentiles. Look at Acts chapter 10 and verse 28. Acts 10 and 28. It says, and he said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. Acts 11, Acts 11, 1. Through three, it says, now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him. They had a circumcision party and they started criticizing him. They were checking, saying, you went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. How dare you do such a thing? Because it was unlawful. So there were laws that even forbade Jesus from interacting with this Gentile woman. So why did he deal with her at all? And we read in Mark 7, 29, 7, 29, he said to her, for this statement, after their discourse, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. He healed her daughter. He wasn't even there. Jesus had that remote Wi-Fi healing. He can be here and heal you somewhere else. That's the kind of God that we serve. But this is pretty good treatment. He's not supposed to be dealing with this woman. There's laws that forbid it, but he heals her daughter. Why did Jesus deal with her at all? Jesus is trying to teach his disciples and everybody else who believes in all these laws about separating yourself from other people and all this stuff. He's trying to teach them a lesson. And that lesson is that everyone was worthy of his loving care and ultimately his salvation. Did you hear what I just said? Jesus was trying to show to everybody that everybody is worthy of his loving care and his salvation. We act like we hold the key to who can be saved sometimes. Sometimes as Christians, we can be a little self-centered like the Jews. The Jews believe that the blessings of God were only for the Jews. If we engage in enough conversation, we would find out that some of us believe that God's highest blessings are only reserved for Seventh-day Adventists. If we kept on talking, we'd find out that some folk believe that only the prayers of Seventh-day Adventists are answered. And if we kept on talking, we'd find out that there's some people that believe that only seven-day Adventists are going to make it to heaven. But Christ says, my salvation is for everybody. He didn't give you the key to heaven. He still has the keys and he determines who gets in and who does not. Amen? And that's the lesson that he's trying to teach to those that are looking on. They say you shouldn't even be talking to this woman. And she shows up at a place where he's trying to be hid. And she sneaks in and asks him. She's supposed to be praying to her pagan gods. But she comes and asks him, heal my daughter. And while everybody's watching, he starts talking to her like a dog. She rolls with it. And at the end of it, her daughter is saved. And Jesus is showing everybody that salvation is for anybody who comes to me. Amen. And that's why we should be taking people to Jesus. We think we have the keys and we tell people that you need to do this and that. We need to be taking them to Jesus. See, 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 I, I, I don't want to get too much into it, but I've been an Adventist all my life. And I grew up in a very conservative church. And I've pastored some very conservative churches. And people start judging you by how you look. They judge you by how you talk. And the Bible says, while you pointing out splinters in everybody else's eye, you need to be pulling that plank out of your own eye. We always try to judge people. And Jesus is showing them, you are not the judge, I'm the judge. And I determine who gets saved. You and I need to reach out to folk and treat them not as dogs, but as human beings, precious souls that God gave his only begotten son to die for. Amen. 
See, our challenge is to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. If someone else had something so precious that it contained the key to eternal life and everlasting happiness, I would want them to share it with me. So believe me, it's our duty to share the gospel with any and everybody because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to a knowledge of him and fall in love with him and that they are saved. Amen. So when Jesus treats you like a dog, he goes to any limb to find you, and his presence cannot be hidden. He is the answer. Everyone is worthy of his blessings, and he shows that everyone is worthy of his salvation and of his grace. Amen? My wife and I, we have two little dogs. But I had this, I had this other dog for, for like 10 years. I had to put her to sleep after a while because she was about 20 years old at that point. And, and I, I tried to be good to her. I'd make sure that she had fresh water and food every day. I'd take her for walks, and as she got older, I had to take her for two and three and four walks a day. I, I would bathe her and get her nails clipped and take her to the vet to make sure that she had all her shots and that her health needs were met. I bought her a little bed. I put it in the corner of my room. And I got her a little blanket. And she loved to get up under the blanket at night, stick her little nose out in her eyes, and just watch me before I fell asleep. I, I, I tried to be good to her. But every now and then, she would poop on my floor. Yet and still, I'd take her for another walk, give her another bath, take her back to the vet, we go on for a while and she do good and then again guess what she poop on my floor and it got me thinking about God's dealings with us he provided a little money to pay our bills gave us jobs and homes and cars family that loves us puts clothes on our back food on the table blessed us with a little education healed us when we're sick, raised us up off our bed. He's even delivered us from some sticky situations that we got ourselves into. God's been good to us, am I right? But every now and then we go and do some dirty business. You know what I'm talking about. We mess up, make bad choices, and we know we're in the wrong. Then what does God do? Blesses us again, picks us up again, turns us around again puts our feet on solid ground again and we still go and do some dirty business but God keeps on picking us up we're not deserving of his blessing but still he keeps blessing us and keeping us and treating us with his best and while people are quick to criticize us and family members are quick to disown us and jobs are quick to fire us and Culture is quick to cancel us and the world is quick to write us off Jesus shows everybody that we are still worthy amen while the world may write me off, Jesus says, you're worthy. While the world might judge me by my ethnicity and even my skin tone, Jesus says, red, yellow, black, and white, all are precious in my sight. Jesus shows that everybody is worthy. While the world might say, you are worthless because of your past, Jesus says, I'm priceless because of my future. And while no one would give anything to ransom me, God gave his only begotten son so that you and I could live. Jesus shows that we are worthy. Amen. And so because Jesus shows that we're worthy, we need to be showing the world that they too are worthy. And not go out treating people like dogs, but treating them with dignity, treating them with, 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 with respect, giving them uh, that respect that's better than they even think that they deserve. To show the world that Jesus Christ loves them. Amen. Right now, I just want you to think about how good God has been to you. I'm asking you to bow your heads and to close your eyes. Because we know that we have messed up, we have sinned. Many times we've sinned on purpose. We've chosen to go against God's will. And it would be right for him to treat us like dogs because we keep on doing dirty business. But even in those moments, I want you to thank God in your heart right now while you're talking to him for picking you up, dusting you off, setting you back on your feet and giving you another chance and another chance and another chance. Just thank him in your heart right now for breaking you off some crumbs so that there would be blessings in your life. 
And right now I want to ask individuals to stand who are thankful for what God has done for them. And they're saying, God, use me to share your light and your love with other people so that some blessings can be broken off in their life as well. That I want to be a light in the community where I live, where I work, where I go to school, even where I play and entertain myself. I want to show the light and love of Jesus so that other people can receive and feel his blessings in their life as well. If that's you, you're standing right now. Maybe there's somebody in this place who says, I want to go all the way with Jesus because I recognize what he has done for me. I want to join this church and be baptized and just say yes to the Lord. If that's you, just move out of the aisles, come down front. There's a card in the back of the pew that you can grab and fill out. You can hand it to someone. They'll make sure that it gets to me. But I would love for you just to move out of the aisles so that we can celebrate with you and thank God for the blessing that he is bestowing in your life now and will continue to bestow in your life. We want to fill up this pool, have a baptism and a celebration, and we will rejoice also knowing that all of heaven rejoices. And even as I pray, you can make your way. Praise you, the Lord. Even as I pray, you can make your way. We want to make sure that we get all the information. If we have cards, pens, pencils, let's make sure we get all the information. I'm praying now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all that you have done for us. Lord, we are not deserving of the blessings that you give us each and every day, every single week, every month, every year. But you are a good God. You are a good shepherd. Sheepdog doesn't make a difference as long as you are master. That's what we care about. So continue to bless us. Even if it's crumbs, we know that there's potent potential in every crumb of a blessing that comes into our life. It can sprout into something that is life-changing. So we just cry out and call out that while another's you calling, please don't pass us by, oh Lord. We thank you for all the blessings that you have given us in the past, everything that you're doing right now. And Lord, use us to be a light, to show everyone else, to share with everyone else, and they can too be blessed the way that we've been blessed by you. We thank you for those who have come forward, those who are standing and all that it means in their hearts. Hear us as we cry and talk to you in this moment and in this hour. We thank you again. Let us all together say amen and amen. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Amen. And in Jesus' name, we are now dismissed. Amen. 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 We're going to start just dismissing you right after the sermon. I'm going to ask the, 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 the ushers to come forward. And if we can be ushered out in an orderly fashion, we would greatly appreciate it. But may God bless you and enjoy your Sabbath day. Amen.